Hey everybody, in this video I'm doing a high level overview of why I've chosen Kraken for my CTR manipulation over other CTR tools like CTR Booster or SERP Clicks or a handful of others that I've tried. Um, I'm not going to go into all the other versions. If you've tried some of them and you felt that they're lacking in functionality, you're not alone. I've been in the same boat. I've tried a lot of them. There were always things that I didn't like. One of the main things that I like about Kraken is that it's entirely cloud-based. They provide the mobile proxies, so there's no proxies for you to manage yourself. It doesn't require you to run a local agent to participate, where a lot of them you have to have this agent running either on your computer or on a VPS that you own, and it needs to always be running. And if it ever closes, then your campaign stops running. And on top of that, you generally have to have your own proxies combined with it. This, you can come in here, set up your own campaign, launch it, close out the tab, come back 30 days later, and it ran the whole campaign for you. And, well, assuming that you did 30 days, however long you want to set it for, you come back, it's still going to be running. You don't need to have this open 24-7. It's cheaper than the competition. It has more functionality, and it has more randomization in the campaigns to stay off of Google's radar. All right, so setting up a test campaign, we're just going to name this test. Uh, the category here doesn't really, it, it's not a, a function of Kraken. It's just another label that you can use to keep track of your campaigns. You have the ability here to choose desktop, mobile, or both. This is just going to be for the fingerprint. It's using mobile proxies either way, but you can tell Google that you're like uh, the fingerprint of your browser. You can say that you're on a desktop or a mobile device. I think most searches are done mobile, so I'm typically just doing mobile, but I don't have enough data to suggest that one is better than the other. Uh, just most people are using mobile. In here, we're just gonna do 50 searches for the month. You can do these, these quick results where it's either seven, 14, or 30 days. Um, let's just hit 30. This is a, a tool that just came out where you can customize the number of searches down to the day. So let's say, you know, this is a 30 day campaign. We're doing 60 or 50 searches. I can say the first day I want one search and then tomorrow I want to do zero. And then the day after that, I want to do 15. Again, this is just another way that Kraken offers the ability to randomize your CTR so that you don't get picked up or flagged by Google for doing these same repetitive tasks over and over and over. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire month for that, but you know, you, you can choose every single day, or I believe if you leave it blank, that Kraken will just hey. randomize it at this point. You also have the ability to track the geo grid. So you can put in the business name, the grid size, distance, keywords, and you can track your GMB profiles along with your CTR campaign. Obviously that's just for GMBs. It's not going to be for normal SERP stuff, but um, it's cool that it's in there as an added functionality and they are currently not charging anything additional for it. So uh, I guess take advantage of that while you can. I don't know if that's going to be that way forever. Uh, but then onto the command list here. The first thing I'm typically doing is changing the location because I want to simulate the traffic. Let's just say I'm going around Allentown. Now you may just choose Allentown if you're a relatively new GMP. Maybe you just need to rank within a mile there like you're not ranking at all. You can hit the mile and then call it good. That's all you need. Or if you're already ranking in that area and you want to rank, like say you're ranking all around this area, you've got a good, I don't know, five mile radius, whatever. You might want to do like one mile radius in like a ring around where you're already ranking to push that border out a little bit more. This is the level of customization that you get with Kraken that you just don't get anywhere else. So I, and I know awesome bot has the ability to choose latitude and longitude, but I, I they still don't have this level of customization and just ease of use. Like I feel like they're, uh, their agent is really clunky uh, and annoying to use. So lots of fl flexibility there. You can also search for places. Um, I don't know. Oh, here, airport, you could do that. So 
now this will it, it'll it looks through Google Places. So this tag you see O'Hare International Airport. So you can use Google uh, Places that exist. So if you want to use a point of interest and rank around that, uh, again, tons of customization there. After the change location, let's say we're going to do a Google My Business search. In here, you add the keywords, and I'm just making these up. I don't know what the highest volume are. Following uh, service, I'd imagine, is one. So when it does one of these searches, it's not going to search all three of these keywords. It's going to pick one at random. So if you're doing 30 searches in a month, it's safe to assume that they get about 10 each. Now it is totally random, so you might end up with 11 on one and nine on another, but they're gonna be about 10 each on average. Then it finds your business based on the business name, so make sure you copy the exact business name, whatever it is on Google, paste it in here. Same thing for the website link, it confirms it based on the website link. If you go to like an inner page or landing page, whatever, just hit the copy button on your Google profile and paste it in here, just so you know it's the exact link. And then for whatever reason, if it can't find it, it can use the GMB share link. Now, I would warn that this is probably gonna give you a lower quality result because it's gonna be going directly to the GMB profile through the share link. Um, but there is an argument that you could make that says if people are using the share link, that means someone's sharing it and someone else is clicking on it. So. I don't know. I could argue either side for that, but I would I would advise that you go with the most accurate information here. So double check that stuff. Uh, click to call percentage. So the click to call, you can put whatever percentage you want in here. Now this isn't gonna be like a dead call that someone gets. It is gonna click the call button, but think about when you click the call button on your phone, it goes to your phone app and then it sits there. It doesn't typically start calling right away. You have to hit the call button. It'll just like show you the number. So at that point, Google can't track it anymore. So all we're really doing here is sending these engagement signals. So I don't typically do the click to call super high because I want people to continue on to the website. And I think it looks a little less organic if people are clicking the click to call button and then continuing on to the website and browsing through a bunch of stuff because you would think that they're gonna get their answers from a phone call. So. Yeah, honestly, I, I think I've done 30 on a lot of these because I want to show the engagement of going through the rest of the profile. Reviews are a big one. That's why people are on Google Maps. They want to see that trust factor. So these are typically 80 or 90% for me. Browse pictures. This really depends on your industry. For plumbing, people probably aren't too excited about looking at pictures of plumbing. Like that's just not why people are calling a plumber. But if you're doing kitchen remodeling, then yes, this is really important. This would be another one that's 80 or 90. Otherwise, it's probably a 20 if it's plumbing. Driving directions. Again, with the plumber example, people aren't driving to the plumbers. The plumbers are driving to them. So I don't like to overload this. You want to make it look natural, but it is an engagement signal. So I threw a little bit of it in there. Then at the bottom here, you have number of pages. This is the number of pages that it needs to browse through before it finds your result. If you're feeling the need to put it like 12 on here, now, if you're on the first page, it's not gonna go through all the other pages. It'll find you and, and that's it. But if you're really on page nine or 10, you're probably not ready for CTR. This is probably too soon. I am typically putting this at like uh, page four or page five, just to give it a little bit of cushion because Results are super dynamic. And so if for whatever reason, it's not showing up on the third page as it normally would or should, it can go another four or five or whatever. I'm typically doing CTR on GMBs, specifically in areas where they're at least like on the third page. I would say that's the max for what I'm doing. It's really not meant to be this thing that you ignore all the other SEO stuff and you just throw CTR at it and then you expect to rank number one on Google. That's not what CTR is for. CTR is to show some engagement with your profile as you're building on your SEO foundation. After it does all of that stuff, it continues on to the website by default. So then on the website, you can do read on website. So this is gonna simulate somebody scrolling up and down on the website. 
and then you can add a little bit of a dwell time. So now it's going to read on the website, scroll up and down for two minutes before it goes to your next action, which could be find and follow link. Maybe you're going to go to the contact page on the website and then you're going to do read on page again. You want it to read the contact information. You want it to wait another minute, maybe not wait as long. I wouldn't go crazy with the wait times. Um, stick with around the averages. At least that's my opinion. I rarely do more than three or four minutes. Uh, I, I feel like two to three minutes is kind of average for a lot of the niches that I deal with. If for some reason yours is different, you can. I'm just saying be cautious of doing things that seem unnatural. So we've got the wait time there, another minute, that's on the contact page. And then we want it to go back to the previous page that it's on. Now you could have it find and follow another link. I mean, watch an embedded video. The The options here are really unlimited. Just I, I like the, the YouTube option. So if you have a YouTube video that gives some description of something and then you want to funnel people onto your website, you can have it watch the video and then click the link from the description, whatever, and, and it doesn't have to be the only link. You specify the link from the description, and now it's going to continue on to your website from your YouTube video. There's a lot of stuff in here. Again, I'm not gonna go over all of this. I will do separate videos on some of these things, but one additional thing that I wanna touch on, we created a group here, a command list group, but you can also use, um, the already created recipes, you can create your own recipes, and the recipes are groups of commands that, that have already been created. And what's really cool about this is it's another level of randomization where now you have these completely separate groups. Now this is a change location. I could change I, I could choose a completely different area on this one and say five miles that's you know this northern point of Allentown. And then Google my business search, read on website, wait, follow link, read on website, wait. And you can customize each one of these to be very specific journeys so that you're not taking the exact same path every single time it lands on your website. It's going to take these different actions. And just like the keyword list, it doesn't do all of these every single time. It will pick a group. So if it's going to do one search for today, it's going to come through here and say, I'm either going to do this one or I'm going to do this one or I'm going to do this one. It doesn't do all of them. And that way you get randomized user journey throughout your website to avoid Google detection. You can do up to 10 recipes per campaign. So you can have 10 different groups that it cycles through for each one of your campaigns to help randomize the data. And then you see down here 50 views. Scheduling costs 30 credits, so it's a total of 31 credits to run this campaign. But most of these things are free, customizing the days, adding additional command lists. That doesn't, or the geo grids even, that doesn't increase your cost. What increases your cost significantly is the number of days. Now we're at 50 views right now. If I go up to 250 views, now it's only at 33 credits. So the views, 250 views are only three credits. And if you look at the pricing here, you get 2,500 credits for the month. You can run 25 campaigns. So you could use up to 100 credits per campaign before you hit your max. And since the views here, and you would never do 2,500 views unless you're in some crazy, crazy niche. But here at 2,500 views, you're still not even close to the 100 credits that you could use per campaign that you're allowed. I could come in here and add more recipes. Let's just, I don't know what all of these are. I, I, I usually do custom ones. I'm just picking random stuff. I added all those additional recipes for more randomization, still 55 credits. So let's compare that to SERP clicks, just to look at pricing. They give you 6,000 credits for $197 a month. They say it's about 660 clicks. But what they don't tell you is that's if you use the all country tier, which means your clicks are going to be coming from China and Russia and India and wherever. It's based on the number of clicks that you have, not scheduling or not. I mean, there's like no customization in SERP clicks. 
And if you look down here, 4,000 credits, approximately 444 clicks in all country tier, China, Russia, whatever, 235 if it's an individual country tier. So if you choose the United States, it's half that. So it's 197 for about 300 clicks instead of 660, where here it's not based on the number of clicks. And you can see I even put in 2,500 clicks and it was still only 20 or 55 credits. And, and, and this is for 297. So you can run significantly more campaigns with Kraken. You have significantly more customization with Kraken. You have geo grids that are included. You can do YouTube videos. You can do all sorts of stuff. Actually, I don't remember if Serp Clicks has YouTube videos, but if you're familiar with Serp Clicks at all, you know that they don't have this level of customization. It's nowhere near it. So I think that's kind of good for a high level overview. I will be doing more videos on specific use cases. I'm going to be doing a case study on, I'm, I'm going to pick a random GMB in somewhere. I don't know where yet. Uh, I'm not going to use my own clients. I'm going to pick someone random and I'm going to show you what we can do with the CTR campaign in Kraken over seven days, 14 days, 30 days. And you'll have to follow me to get the updates. Depending on when you're watching this, I may have already done it, but go ahead and give me a follow. Watch this playlist for more customized uh, more in-depth, how to set up a campaign, uh, how to do it strategically, how to choose the right number of clicks within a month or within whatever time frame, And I'll try to cover as much in those videos as I can so you know exactly what you need to do when you go sign up for Kraken. I uh, appreciate you watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, and we'll see you in another video. Thanks.